right, I'd like to call a joint special school building committee to order. We're at the Nashville High School North Lecture Hall. It's Thursday, uh, excuse me, it's Monday, March 6th, 2023, despite what it says on here. And it's 6.35 p.m. Would the clerk please call the roll? Sure. Alderman Dowd? Present. Alderwoman Wilshire? Here. Alderwoman Clee? Alderwoman Timmons? Here. Alderman Sullivan? Here. Miss Raymond? Here. Miss Lamph here is in Ireland. Miss Bishop is here. Miss Giglio? Here. And Mr. Claffey? Here. Everyone is present and accounted for. Hi, right, we have a quorum. All right, would the clerk please call the prayer and would all the right. Sullivan lead us in the pledge? Sorry. <clears throat> I could probably do this by heart by now, but Almighty God, we have the high honor and serious duty to manage the educational affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. So help us God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Okay, if there's no objections, we'll waive the meet, reading of the minutes of the last meeting, January 26, 2023, and place them on file. Remarks by the chairman. Thank you, everyone, uh, for this rescheduled meeting due to the, the bad weather when the, the last time it was scheduled, and we still will be having uh, our regular meeting at the end of this month. Okay. Remarks by school administration. Uh, Superintendent? Uh, no, just really quickly, um, I had the opportunity to walk through McCarthy last week. Um, and it, it just, it's remarkable on the amount of progress that has been made. So I really want to thank um, all of our um, construction partners, the JSSBC, for the support. But um, from signing the beam until last week, it's truly, truly um, incredible on the um, the work that's being done and again, the support of this board to make that happen. So I'm really excited about the um, next six months of what the school is gonna look like, but also um, touring the other middle schools and looking at all the other construction pro um, projects, I'm really thrilled with the, the amount of work going on. So thank you all, um, really thankful for this committee. Welcome, yes, it, it changes daily. Uh, Mr. Smith, did you have anything? Uh, just that the, um, Rededication ceremony for Penichuk that was scheduled for, I believe, later this week is being pushed back. Uh, we're waiting to get the uh, dedication plaque, which I believe is due the end of this month, Ken. So sometime in April, we'll set that, the, working with uh, the principal to decide on that date. All set. The other thing is, uh, as you will notice by the invoices, the amount of projects is growing. Uh, not only do we have the middle school projects, but we are finished with fairgrounds. Um, we have Penichuk, the new, the new McCarthy School. We have Franklin Street, uh, which will be ongoing for a while. Um, we have Maine, Dunstable, and Birch Hill, which are underway. Not physically, they're planning. And uh, we also are underway as far as planning initial stages of the three vestibule projects. So there's a lot going on, and that's why the invoices are longer than usual. Okay. So we will start uh, with the architect's report. And Jamie from Harriman. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have a summary kind of to go over tonight on each of the each of the design portions of the project. So I'll start off at McCarthy Middle School. 
Um, Harriman continues to inspect the work. We were out there last week uh, uh, reviewing what was going on, and, and uh, as the superintendent said, it's uh, moving along quite nicely and just starting to get to that point where you're really excited as you're walking through the interior. You're starting to see some finishes go on in those lower levels. So um, the work is being done. Uh, the work that's been been reviewed is, is being done really well, um, de de very detail-oriented, so it's, it's nice to see that quality going in. Um, there's a mock-up panel on site, so a mock-up panel is kind of like a, a small portion of construction that's not actually part of the building. It can be part of the building, but we had one done because this is such a, a large uh, building. Um, we had a mock-up panel built separately from the building to kind of review the uh, exterior components and how they get put together um, and kind of setting, it's kind of setting a standard uh, for when they get onto the building. Um, so that's been, that's been around for a while, but uh, just recently they were able to do the masonry work on that uh, to show how the, the brick will look. And um, so I was there on Thursday again last week, like I mentioned, and, and was reviewing that, that work and uh, look, looks very nice. Uh, gl glad to see that going. So um, we've, uh, since our last JSSBC, we've had a couple of meetings, um, with school admin, uh, just reviewing a couple of things. So one is the furniture. We had a furniture kickoff meeting. We may have touched, touched on this a little bit in our last meeting, but, um, we're reviewing, getting that furniture design, uh, started up for the, the McCarthy Middle School. Uh, we've been making some progress on it as, as more like the existing conditions of the Elm Street School furniture and reviewing that previously. I think we've talked a little bit about that in the, in the late last year. Now we're really getting into starting to lay out the spaces and start to look at furniture options. Um, so this was just an initial kickoff meeting, kind of talk about timeline, talk about um, what the, the desires might be for the school and how some of the spaces uh, might vary because of some of the different programs that are in this school. So uh, we continue, we'll continue to make design progress on that. Um, that'll be a few months out before the, the, the drawings are complete. Um, and then planning how that school is going to be phased for setting the furniture because you'll have areas of that building that'll be done um, actually quite shortly within a few, you know, several months here. And then some that's going to go on, go, you know, go on, go on all the way to uh, mid 2024. Um, so it's it's best to kind of do the package as one design package uh, and work to schedule those um, that uh, distribution into the building. And maybe you know we're kind of talking maybe it's like three or four, possibly five uh, different set uh, setups of those of those spaces. So we continue to refine that, but this was just an initial meeting to kind of discuss that, what that should look like. <clears throat> We also had a uh, meeting with the interim special ed director and school admin, um, and just was reviewing this project as a whole, talking about some of the specifics, um, really at the McCarthy Middle School and the programs that are going in there. Some, a lot of them are coming from Elm Street. Um, I think there's some from Fairgrounds as well that is intended to go to this space. <clears throat> and while we were having that meeting, um, we, we reviewed a little bit about the playground. I think it, I've talked about that a little bit in the past, but just trying to, to nail that down. That's still ongoing. Um, we did make some progress here in the, let's say in the past uh, week or so to kind of get, get uh, that on, on the ball. But the other uh, element was reviewing the medically fragile, um, the medically fragile toilet room area. Um, it was identified that, that maybe it's not quite the size that it needs to be for the amount of efforts that are needed to potentially um, work with some of those students. And the finding that was based on it at South High School, they just recently put in a, like a hoist system uh, in that space. Um, and so um, Special Education Director Alexander brought me, actually brought me over to South High School to look at how they operate and how that, that function works in the space they needed over there. They, they have a different population. I think it's a little bit larger because there's uh, more years of school that students are in the high school. But we, we were able to discuss what best fits um, for the middle school uh, population that's anticipated. And so uh, there's actually a really nice, we had like a little collaboration room that was um, 
connected, it was in a separate room, almost like an office, connected to where that toilet room is envisioned to go. And so it was an easy adjustment to redesign that little space to kind of expand it into that space. Um, it doesn't take away from any program space. It doesn't take away from, um, you know, necessities of that area. Um, he, you know, it's, it's a, it was a, a group space that probably wouldn't be used for the same type of space anyway. So we were able to redesign that. Um, and we actually just submitted the proposal request to Harvey today so that they can look at uh, how that impacts um, the project. Now, all they have in that area right now is steel studs. They haven't really, and, and plumbing has set up and we've kept all kind of that plumbing in the same area. So really it's kind of moving some, some, uh, some of the finishes, um, laying out a hoist, coordinating the structure with the hoist system. Um, so we'll review that, Harvey will review that, and then we'll maybe one of these future meetings, we'll talk about again where that stands. But uh, I think that was extremely timely conversation to have that one element uh, of pickup. It's gonna make a big difference, impact to the space, so. Um, also, one other small thing is as we're reviewing furniture, <clears throat> excuse me, we identified that there are some pottery wheels that are um, desired for um, the art, one of the art rooms coming from Elm Street over. Um, and so we just had to make a small adjustment with a little, like a short low wall with some outlets in order for them to line up the pottery wheel. So we've made that adjustment. Slabs haven't been poured, so it doesn't impact, uh, you know, the existing slabs there. So everything's kind of in timing really well. I mean, obviously it'd be best if it was uh, able to be identified early, but it wasn't. And we've been able to catch up on it as, as the construction goes, so. And then uh, just one other final thing is we continue to address any questions that come up from the field as they're building things, they see things that are different than what the drawings are. We'll be able to collaborate and, and make things uh, in a positive uh, construction process. At uh, Franklin Street, um, we're working on the three, previously the JSSBC had approved three um, proposals from Harriman for some design efforts, uh, additional de design efforts. Um, one was an uh, elevator modernization uh, design and coordination. Uh, that progresses and actually is anticipated to go out, I think it's Thursday this week, to Harvey to review and price. Um, the second um, proposal was for the kitchen design uh, on the uh, third floor of the, uh, of the Franklin School. And we anticipate that to go next week. We have some coordination to do. Uh, I know the structural engineer is looking to get out there this week to confirm some uh, mechanical penetrations for some new units that would be put in, like for the kitchen hood as an example. Um, so we're looking at probably next week that'll that'll head out to Harvey for them to uh, review and price. And the last one was a, a structural slab analysis of, um, there was some deteriorating slabs found uh, as ceilings were removed and things were being done. and. The structural engineer was on site, uh, reviewed the, the spalling concrete, and um, it was a function of previous construction work that, that likely uh, exacerbated the issue, um, but he was able to provide some solutions. It's not a, it, didn't, it did not turn out to be a major structural undertaking, but it's some solutions we're putting in some products to, to help close up the, the little holes that had spalled out. So, that was, that was good news. Um, over at Birch Hill and Main Dunstable, um, that project is uh, beginning to slide over to the construction side of things. Uh, Harriman issued the last addenda to the drawings uh, just today, um, and that was addressing mm -hmm. a few things. We've issued two addendums, so our original documents went out uh, last month, and then we've issued an addenda a couple weeks back, and then one um, today that we're addressing um, the temporary portables that will be in for temporary classrooms for during for the duration of construction. Um, the foundation design <coughs> wasn't, <coughs> excuse me, wasn't able to be completed uh, prior to the, the CDs being issued due to, um, we were waiting for some information back from the geotechnical engineer. We received that, we're able to um, review, review that uh, scope and, um, I think some of the good news that came out of that was that we, it uh, looks like we're able to use the existing foundations that were for the fairgrounds portables that were were held after the pro that project was complete, uh, being stored here in the city. So we're able to utilize those. We will have to procure more because this, these these portables are 
um, different configuration, need more support spots, but at least being able to reuse those and save some funds for you know added for the added costs that could have been could have been incurred. So that, that's good news. Um, we're also reviewing the, the location of those portables on site, and that was addressed in today's addendum. There was a few adjustments that had to be made based on grade, uh, grade issues and, and slopes. Um, and then just detail refinement and coordination as we were discussing things, and Harvey came back with a few questions, and we just needed to respond to them. Um, so that, that's all been cleaned up. Um, I, uh, last week, I believe early last week, I issued uh, some permitting sets to the state fire marshal. So those are in their hands for their review. Um, so we're waiting to see back what they come back with for comments. That usually can take I don't know, anywhere from a few weeks to a couple of months, but we're, we're, we'll continue to inquire with them to make sure that stays on as, as much as we have influence over making sure it stays on pro, uh, progress. And then we anticipate issuing the city permitting sets this week. So we just wanted to wait for that final addendum to go out so that we can issue one complete package to them to make it uh, easier per the request, make, make it easier than them seeing additional drawings come in and trying to refine what changed and what didn't change. So that'll, that'll head out this week. Uh, I think that's it I had for school. I, I would say, I expect Harvey to speak to it, but uh, for Penichuk, we did sign a partial substantial completion letter uh, for that, uh, it was the last week, I guess. Um, I guess it's Monday, not Thursday. So yes, uh, last week, um, and uh, that was for most of the building. I think there's a few areas that still remain. So that that'll that remaining substantial completion form will come once they're finalized. That which they're getting really close on that too. So um, but we wanted to give give them uh, that sign so they could start warranties on the products that have been completed and some of those products have been there for and completed for a long time so uh, it was a good good time on that so any questions questions uh, yes oh, thank you <laughs> thank you very much i have a question about the portables the last time i seen them which i was always in schools they weren't in great condition there were a lot of them was slanted, the floors would slanted, you put a ball at the top, it would roll down the bottom. They were, a lot of them I didn't feel was pretty safe. So are you getting rid of the older portables or do we have any newer ones in the last couple of years? John, do you want to address that or? So the portables we're using for the Birch Hill May Day project are coming from Elm Street. Mm -hmm. So those four buildings, two are going to each of the two schools. Mm -hmm. Um, have they seen better days? Absolutely. They, I, I think uh, probably installed in the early 2000s, so they're 20 years old. Uh, okay. We have been maintaining them all along. We've tweaked the uh, heating ventilation systems, done some uh, roof replacement where necessary. Uh, confident they'll get us through the next two years, three years if it takes that long. Okay, thank you. Just another thing, when we install portables by code, we have to install them as though they're permanent. So they have plumbing, heating, everything else associated that uh, is, has to be hooked up. It's just part of the installation. And just a couple things. Um, Ms. Gilio, you're going to be really impressed with the new furniture and the new library at Penichuk. It's some of the most comfortable chairs. <laughs> So if you got a book that's going to put you to sleep, it will. Uh, the other thing is that at Penichuk and the McCarthy School, uh, we did the Bollard Walk with Mr. Smith, myself, Mr. Lassard, and Mr. Rell from Harvey. Uh, as you may know, this is one of the unknown unknowns uh, that uh, the types of things that come up during a project. The uh, Homeland Security requires that we put bollards in front of the school. So. One of the decisions was made, where do we going to classify them? I know Jamie doesn't like this term, the fancy bollards <laughs> in the front of the school. <laughs> and what we call the plain bollards in the back of the school where nobody sees them. Uh, not a big difference in price, but uh, anyway. Right? <laughs> I knew you wanted to comment. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the quote unquote fancy bollards, which I don't like that term because they're not fancy. There's nothing spectacular about them. They're a precast block 
Um, they're at a um, seat level, so we're, we're use, utilizing those at, um, you know, bigger entrances, like primary entrances, entrances you'll see. Um, <clears throat> and so they're, again, they're a precast block that gets set um, and secured and you can like kids students will sit on them and, and adults will sit on them and so they're at like main entries and stuff like that where you can utilize uh, seats the other ballers are back of house ones and those are like a pipe baller that you'd see at any you know warehouse area so th those are out of sight and out of mind so uh, the word fancy can have different connotations they're not pipe ballers is what he means so <laughs> <laughs> yes are they the same ones that are at fairgrounds no, they are a little bit different, but similar. I mean, a similar similar thing. These are um, squares. Those ones are actually like benches over at fairgrounds. Right. So similar similar idea though. Okay. Yep. So they'll be they're attractive and they're functional. Uh, but we don't need anybody sitting next to the dumpster in the back of the school. All right. So uh, I think that's it. Um, so now we'll switch to construction manager, uh, Ken from Harvey. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Thank you, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, I will, so a lot, a lot of the photos that I had in my construction update are now three weeks old. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't spend too much time on the photos that are in here, but I did add one. So if you flip to the first page there, um, you'll see kind of one of the the feature walls in this, the lower level of um, the student building C. So you can kind of get an idea for, um, you know, the, the different style that you'll be walking into um, that Mr. and Super, Superintendent mentioned earlier. So this is kind of an idea of, of what the, the level of finishes that's gonna be going into uh, Harriman's design in the school. So before I kind of give an update on what's going on inside, I'll just give a quick update on the exterior uh, of the school. So. We've been lucky thus far this winter with the weather. You know, obviously we got some snow last week, but we were able to pretty much get to subgrade, which is kind of like the finished level of all the athletic fields. So we were able to get most of that done, uh, which was you know very advantageous. So um, working with Harriman on getting kind of the final grading completed and ready for this spring and early summer so we can get the fields um, planted and established so we can get two growing periods for the for the athletic field so that's kind of, that's an important milestone for us to get those established and and planted and watered uh, in time for this growing season so working through that and miscellaneous um, site improvements getting this summer we'll be getting all of the um, kind of the um, walkways that are set away from the school established the guardrails when you're coming up new Dan D'Antonio Drive all the curbing we put in and then next summer we'll take care of the plantings that are kind of around the the school itself so uh, you, you'll be seeing this site kind of take shape away from the construction project around the building so again I always say uh, the building sequencing is C B D A so building C B and D are kind of the more student wings and building A is kind of the main entrance uh, learning commons kitchen area so it's got that's its kind of own on only little uh, animal there but so building C B and D are very similar in design whereas you know we're starting in building C lower level and basically each floor is about four weeks behind the other one so building C if you walk into the building right now it's we're putting in cabinets if you go on the floor above we're about we're about four weeks behind there so you're going, to base, you're going to be seeing a lot of the same photos for the next year and a half or so with the ultimate goal of turning um, student area C over early in 2024 to allow um, things to be trouble, troubleshooting, move furniture in so we're not doing a scramble at the end of the summer. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll basically have plenty of time to move everything in you know, as a team together with the, with the city. So building C, um, again, starting down bottom, most of the finishes are going in the lower level, working way, our way up. So if you walk around the site, if you go to, two, I guess, the next uh, sheet, you'll see the different stages of each building. So since these photos were taken, building B has been completely sheathed in, which is the exterior. So once that's complete, we can go inside and start working on the interior stuff. Um, even since this photo has been taken, building D has been almost 100% sheathed. 
and Building A is is right behind it. So you can kind of see how we're working our way around the site. And I, I, I did mention to uh, Mr. Smith and all that were in doubt, I think it would be, once the weather turns a little bit, if we could do a nice tour for everybody, you'd get to see a little bit of every stage of the project, so. Are there any questions on McCarthy? I know um, we'll be back here in another two or three weeks, so we'll have some updated photos here that are more more current. Any just, questions on McCarthy? Just a couple things real quick. The National Lions Club has is donating a tree in honor of Brian at the McCarthy School. So I'm not sure when it's going to be planted, but they have donated a tree. What kind of tree? <laughs> Could be an oak tree. <laughs> That'll be up to the architect. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, the Board of Aldermen has passed the legislation now so that to expand the parking at any of our middle schools or high schools, we don't need a variance. Simplified way, but basically high schools have plenty of parking. But um, if McCarthy School, we added, added parking uh, after the construction's done, it's a long story. Um, because one, one of the things we have to do is we had to come up with an area because of the fire department where the students can muster. So we had to level out a, a space for that and it will be gravel initially, but eventually will be paved. Uh, okay. Thank you. So moving over to Penichuk right now. So Jamie mentioned earlier that we did receive a uh, substantial completion form for their Majority of the building that's been completed, I'd say about 95%. The only items or areas of the building that weren't included in that were the computer and ELL areas, which have now been turned over and 100% signed off by the National Building Department and the uh, Fire Marshal as well. And uh, we also did some small renovations to a minor corridor and then uh, like a student outreach uh, area in one of the other, it, it was serving as the temporary computer cluster for the school. So we're now 100% complete with what we call the contract work. And we're just working through some items um, that are uh, change orders, some that I'll be talking about tonight. Uh, you know, there's been some, you know, as Alderman Dowd mentioned, well, I won't be talking about it tonight, but uh, next, later this month, I'll be talking about the bollards. And there are some minor things that we've been able to cover uh, with with buyout savings, as you know, minor things, security items, electrical items, uh, we were able to provide additional power to um, 29 additional classrooms to account for the the new projectors that were installed. So we were able to get in there last week during vacation and address a lot of these odds and ends that that we normally can't take care of when the students are in school. So um, Jamie did mention a few minor things that we're going through right now. We're working through the commissioning process of the building. That's basically getting, making sure that all the equipment that's been installed is up and running per Harriman's design parameters and addressing any items that, that we need to correct as part of our work. Um, and then the sum, uh, in later this spring when the weather does turn, we do have some minor exterior items that we weren't able to complete in the fall. So such as um, plant, some plantings in the learning commons area and a few other minor warranty items that weren't we weren't able to address before the weather turned on us. So all in all, uh, substantially complete at Penichuk and we'll have a presence there through through April and May and be wrapping a few things up there. But all in all, I think the successful project, uh, Principal Falzerano and uh, Assistant Principal Hardiman were, have been great to work with and it was a great staff. I think, uh, I think we had a successful project there. Any questions on Penichuk? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to the, the entire staff at Penichuk. They've been great to work with, you know, right down, in, including the, the custodians, uh, have been uh, godsend to work with. So, what is outstanding still on Penichuk? So there's some uh, minor items for the roof that we have to complete. There's roof edge metal. So if you if you drive around the school. You'll notice that certain areas of the building, like the, the 
edge cap metal has not been installed yet. That's just a kind of a weather permitting item that we're that we're addressing. So right. weather permitting that'll that'll be taken care of. Um, anything else has, is really just um, like additional work. Like there's um, there's a change order that I'll be discussing tonight. Uh, there's a lot of site cleanup that was kind of part of the the solar farm work that that we think you know safety wise there's a, there's a few stumps that were left that should that really should be addressed because it's it's right front of house so i really think it'll clean up mm -hmm. the job site and then there is also and I'll, we'll get into the details uh later but in the back of the school you'll notice the dumpster setup is kind of i know that there's concern about students kind of being able to hide behind certain items and it, it's kind of lack of lack of uh, vision back there so we're yeah. working on uh, putting a kind of an enclosure together to kind of wrap that encompass that whole area so that's smart adolescents are spontaneous um do we think that these solar farm people are going to clean up those last couple of stumps or are they done now and uh, yeah, two different solo people Solar people in the front of the school, the Penetruck Solar Project was a completely different company than the one putting the solar on top of the roof. Right. So, uh, right. One of them works with us, and the other one is their own separate thing. Right. Yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're cleaning up the front of the school on our property. We're not doing anything under their old farm. But uh, so it looks nice, you know. I mean, we go to all that expense to make the school very attractive. We don't want the front to be look kind of sloppy. So they'll be grading it out, taking the stumps out, putting some loom, and planting some grass. And there's there's weeds and stuff growing on some of the power lines and everything. That's all going to be taken out. And. Uh, so um, I think there was one other thing. I There's that to... existing fence that was existing left. We're going to take that down, and clean up that area. It's going to be torn down and planted, grass planted. So uh, <sighs> just, uh, you know, some uh, a little more than cosmetic, but there are things that need to be done. And, and some of the things like that fence around the dumpsters and things, is that's another unknown unknown. Uh, when they started using it back there with the buses, the principal and the teachers found out, okay, where'd the student go? You know, hiding behind the dumpster. So the, the fence will be to corral <laughs> students. And and the other thing is the, the enclosure around the dumpsters was damaged by DPW. So we're not paying for that to get it fixed, but um, we did have to put a, a gate on the sides where the dumpsters go in because the dumpsters that the city gives us have side openings where the custodians have to load. So they weren't putting the dumpsters all the way into the dumpster pad, which that's a long story too. So anyway. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting. Yeah. Franklin Street? Franklin Street. Good evening, everyone. Uh, progress has been going well at Franklin Street. We are, since the last time we met, we have turned over and gotten the certificate of occupancy for the basement level. So what we had pictures of in our presentation before the snow event happened was containment getting put installed so that we could do abatement over February vacation. So sitting here now, that's all been done and cleaned up. Um, and the first floor is vacated. So. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks to the staff for moving around and hopscotching, we're getting through the building um, very well. So right now the, the plan is to continue working on the first floor um, and it's mostly the HVAC work has been done by EEI already. So we're going in there now with new flooring and a little bit of reframing new walls where they need to be um, and new paint fin doing finishes. Our target now um, is to finish before April vacation so that we get our TCO and the occupants of the third floor can move down to the first floor so that over April vacation we can prepare and do abatement as much as we can that week on the third floor. So that, if you remember, alleviates the quantity of abatement that has to be done as soon as school gets out around June 15th. So hopefully we'll have a very small amount left in June, June 15th. We did do one stairwell, we're going to do the other. Um, that would have to be done also, so we're 
trying to tackle as much as we can uh, in the time frames that we have. Once that is done through April vacation, then we will begin with the third floor renovations, which is, that's a little more extensive with, because of the abatement of the walls. Um, we also have roofing that will be going on in the summer. So we can talk about whether we're able to begin that after April vacation or not, because if the construction's on the third floor, the noise above may not be impactful. I, I haven't talked to the roofer about it, but I'm going to speak to him about schedule. So that's a little bit down the road. We'll see what makes the most sense for everybody in the building. And along with that, we'll coordinate with EEI who will be replacing windows in the summer. So um, as has already been mentioned, Main Dunstable and Birch Hill will be the next focus. Ken and his team has put a lot of effort into the phasing with our supers and the schedule. We're in the bidding process right now. The next meeting, you know, we will be starting to bring the GMP budget for review and then Ken will go through all those recommendations to award for all the subs. And then very soon after that, once school's out, the pictures will come <laughs> to go with it. So um, that is rolling along behind the scenes. Um, everybody's busy with that one, so. Any questions on those? Any questions for Franklin Street? We did one minor tweak. It was a stop line that was not put in, so uh, Sean and his crew painted the line on the street because people were not stopping. So that's been taken care of. And once the weather gets better in the spring, which uh, uh, they'll be updating, upgrading the markings on the street around Franklin Street. Well, the questions for us. Yes. So, so now that you've had the one way going for a few months, how is it working out? Have people adjusted? I know there was some concern it, from local downtown people. Talking to the principal, um, he has indicated that it's working fine. And there have been a few people that don't know what STOP means, and the National <laughs> Police are there quite frequently and are making sure they get a written note that there is a stop sign there. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's being watched. Okay. But it's, it's, they haven't had any issues. The, the next concern will be when we add a lot more students to the building and then... And, and, the logistics of making that work, but we planned it ahead and, and should work. Okay, thank you. Anything else from Harvey? Any other questions for Harvey? All right. So, PCOs and PCCOs. Okay. I do have, I mentioned a few of these items earlier. These are all for Penachuk, and these are uh, the additional exterior items. Um, before I get into the, the actual field items, there is one bookkeeping item uh, that's more, uh, I guess, budget related. So um, in an effort to uh, clean, up, clean up both uh, the Harvey books and the, um, the district books, um, under the this is a credit, but under the additional uh, under the original bond for the school, um, we had included the summer 2020 security vestibule and pre-construction work uh, under a separate project. Um, and I guess, Mr. Smith, do you want do you want to take this one? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, ba basically. Um, so we have this project, right? We're just doing work at uh, Penachuk. And when Harvey started the work, say in June, May or June, uh, we didn't have a GMP from them yet. So everything leading from the beginning of their work in June, and the GMP was achieved, I think, in uh, October, give or take. All that work was set up by Harvey as a separate project. Still under the banner of, Pe of Penachuk, but just a separate number. So then from that point on, if you go back through the financial sheets, that's when their GMP started to uh, take effect and every time they put in an invoice, it was deleted from that. Um, I think we, we woke up this uh, fall, talk about woke people. We woke up this fall and discovered that 
uh, there's a discrepancy of about $700,000, give or take. And that discrepancy was exactly the amount of money they spent pre-GMP. So they've already billed us, we've already paid them. It was just in a different column in the county sheets. And this credits us back, obviously, the Correct. That was pretty. That was pretty good. I like that one. That good. Yes, that was great. That was so this was a placeholder so. number uh, for for that exact amount that was previously billed for that work. It was already under the approved GMP that was approved by this committee. It was just a, a placeholder that was earmarked in the approved project value for this work. So this is. It was already previously billed under a different Harvey project. This is now being credited back to the district to balance the books, if that makes sense. Just to make it clear, there's no issue with the amount of money you spent. It was a, just in a, an accounting, where, what account it went into and should have mm -hmm. gone into. So it's, it's fine. It's all part of the GMP. Correct. So if approved, this PCO is a credit back to the district for a total value of uh, a credit of $699 thousand two hundred and ninety dollars and thirty nine cents okay so I'd need a motion to approve PCO number 40 for the Penichurk Middle School in the amount of six hundred and ninety nine thousand two hundred and ninety dollars and thirty nine cents credit so move. okay uh, so the motion has been made any discussion to, yeah. just to clarify this is money that is the credit is just a reflection of it moving different account numbers. We're not actually getting an additional seven hundred thousand dollars back that we can then spend. Put right? It in the right bucket. Okay. If That's I, unfortunate. If I could add, <laughs> so if if you looked at, um, you might have to dig if you don't have it in front of you in paper, but the uh, financial worksheet for Penichuk. So it lists a construction manager proposed budget expended to date. Yep. So I've added two lines underneath that. Uh, one is for pre-construction, which was about 38000 and the rest of them was for the, uh, the summer work, which included the pre-construction. That was for 661 so that makes up the 699 So it's already in the financial sheet. It's already been expended. It's not a windfall for us. <laughs> it's already gone. I, I get excited when I find $20 in my ski jacket, so this, this is pretty good. <laughs> right, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, now a construction item. This is easier to explain. PCO number 41 for Penichuk Middle School. This is uh, the item I mentioned earlier. This is the site cleanup at the main entrance road. So all of the work that's included in this scope is um, grinding the uh, existing dumps. There's, th we tried to remove them later or earlier um, this year, but they're kind of intertwined with the existing utilities. So they have to be grind, grind down instead of removed. So it's kind of a, one reason why they, they are remaining there. Grinding. Getting rid of all of those existing do soils, making sure that all of the, um, the grading is, is kind of flattened out to provide a kind of a safe area for you know, kids leaving and entering the school, um, bringing in new loam and hydro seeding all of that area for um, for the safety of the students, kind of clean up the front of the front of the school. It's also going to take down that existing kind of rusty fence and remove any dead trees and kind of uh, poison ivy that's around the front of the school as well. So kind of just generally clean up that front area. Um, if approved, this PCO is a total uh, contract ad of $39,910.64. So I need a motion to approve PCO number 41 for Penetrack Middle School for a site cleanup at the main entrance in the amount of $39,910.64. I'll make the motion. Ms. Raymond, and you have a question? Of course I have a question. Um, so you said you're going to replace the stumps with loam. Will there be any other kind of plantings there? Do we have an opportunity here to utilize some native plantings like we are at the new middle school? Or is this particular area more needs to be a grassy area? Do we have some plantings around the new sign? I will have to take a look. Um, I mean, we could certainly relocate. We could relocate plantings. Do we have any plantings around the 
I don't recall off the top of my head what's there. If I could, there's actually a state, I don't know if you call it a grant, but there's an effort by the state to plant trees around the schools. And um, that program went to straight to each of the principals. And I don't remember seeing Gabe respond yet, but this might be a good place to, to do something like that. Yes, can, trees planted there. can admin follow up with Mr. Falzerano and let him know that there's an obnoxious person on the board who really likes trees and native plants. <laughs> don't want any tall trees because they just install all those power lines. Right, no, not like trees, trees. I personally, we're thinking like shrubs and A shrubbery. flowers and things for our pollinators. Uh, yeah, I know where it, I got the reference. I know. I'm well, just, Jimmy, I saw Jimmy back there. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy got the reference too. I was just kind of going going off of that. Um, how tall are the stumps? Are they like ankle high or waist high? They're pretty. They're pretty. They, uh, maybe maybe three feet off the ground. I'm just wondering because our old daycare that we went to had trees removed in their backyard and turned them into outdoor tabletop areas for outdoor science, hands out like Montessori type of stuff. Would that be something that we could work in, like a little outdoor? I don't think we want the kids area? that close to Manchester Street. Is it on that? Okay. I'm trying to keep them away from Manchester Street. <laughs> well, I figure just make a tabletop and save on the grinding. Hmm. You yeah, always cut them off and give them, <laughs> deliver them to your yard. Mm -hmm. You use them for firewood. <laughs> if you looked at um, the, no. <laughs> if you looked at the PCO in your package, it shows exactly where the extent of the work is. Maybe you can't see from there, but uh, you, have, you have Manchester Street, and it's right next to it. Yeah, that's I didn't right. know if it was on like the bridge side or. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. If additional plantings are requested, we're, like I mentioned earlier, we'll, we will be there performing warranty work and remaining work in the learning commons area. So if additional plantings would like to be added or relocated, that's something we can take care of. So all the plantings are guaranteed for years. So the ones that didn't make it are all being replaced for no charge. Any other questions? Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. The final item for Panachuk is PCO number 42, and this is for Harriman proposal request number 71, and this is the dumpster area and freezer pad uh, located at the rear of the school by the bus loop. So this uh, proposal request was put together by Harriman with uh, the development of the school district and I guess they're adding a cooler to the exterior of the school to provide additional storage for the kitchen. It's located just outside the kitchen. So uh, this proposal request um, basically provides, Harvey will pro be providing uh, a pad for the cooler itself, um, the enclosure for the, uh, for the concrete and the uh, dumpster that Alderman Dowd mentioned earlier. It's kind of a safety issue that was discussed and developed with uh, Principal Fazerano. So, oh, Jamie, do you have anything you would like to add to the design? Yeah, um, the it's a freezer that is being uh, placed outside. I, I think if we go way back on this project, there was it was identified that the um, kitchen freezer cooler storage, as it stands, is uh, short, um, and I think. It, if we go way back there, we talked. What we talked about was looking for the potential to add a freezer to the exterior of the building, or you know, to the outside to um, address that concern. But but wanted to hold that to uh, look at what the contingencies contingencies were at the time. Um, and so this addresses um, th this particular PR is really just for the freezer pad and the electrical connections to that pad, as well as the grade work around it that needs to happen um, in order to have uh, you know, an accessible walkway that gets to the uh, kitchen area. And it's right outside that kitchen door entry. I understand, and Mr. Smith, please correct me if I'm incorrect, but the school's uh, uh, kitchen uh, budget is supplying the actual freezer itself. That's correct, food right. services. Food services. So. Um, we're, we're just getting it all prepped and ready for that that piece. Um, so I just want to make sure I noted that. Great. 
So I would need a motion to approve PCO number 42, Penetrack Middle School, for a freezer pad and dumpster pad uh, in the amount of $44,911.51. So I'll make that motion. Okay. <laughs> Whichever one you're right. okay. You decide. Any, any, any <laughs> questions? I've never, I've heard you get to any additional questions on it? No. Nope. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Franklin Street. Okay, the PCO we have to review this evening is a credit of $200,000 to reduce our escalation value in the uh, overall guaranteed maximum price that we have for the project. Um, the GMP included originally an escalation amount of $447,000. We have been fortunate enough to be able to, since we're not spending it on escalation, to earmark it and move it to other locations where we needed uh, the funding. For example, the elevator. We had done this uh, a while back where we were able to shift some escalation funds towards another purpose to cover that um, extra expense there. So this is... $200,000 we're taking off of our side of the books to give back to the district to reallocate for other costs associated with Franklin Street um, because we can afford to do so given that we've done the buyout. We're three quarters of the way almost through, so now we can um, comfortably deplete that uh, and give it back. So because it was under your signatory limit there, it's been executed already, but it's in front of you. So PCO number 34 to reduce escalation funds for a credit of $200,000. So since most of the activity at Franklin Street is, has to be expedited to move things along in an expeditious manner, especially when we're getting a credit for $200,000, I've already signed this. If there are no objections, uh, we'll concur with that. All right, Kathy? Then what we have in front of us is PCO, PCCO number nine, which incorporates all of the already previously signed PCOs number 27 through 34. This PCCO number nine is for a total credit value of $180,332.24. So yet another credit, uh, I'll need an approval for PCCO number nine in the credit amount of $180,332.24. Do I hear? Uh, yeah, I'll make that motion. Raymond. All right. Any questions? This is one I haven't signed, so I'm going to sign. I do, I do have a question. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just looking at the details here, um, it looks like, I'm just walking through it, looks like there was an added sidewalk that wasn't added. Uh, PCO number 33, is that, uh, am I looking at that correctly? So then when you add in the costs of of the other change orders, then it's then it's a credit. It's still a credit. The PCCO is a combination of all the PCCOs that have been approved. Correct. So this basically is just the document that that puts it on the contract, but it's already all been approved. So all of these have all been approved. The sidewalk that hasn't been uh, installed yet, uh, in order to save money, we weren't doing it during the winter months because it would cost more. As soon as the spring lets us. We'll finish that sidewalk. So that will come back. It won't come back. That's. It's incorporated. Well, it should be incorporated into this $180,000 credit. So the PCOs 27 through 34 do add up to a net credit of the $180,332.24. Okay. All right. All right. Yep. All right. So Mr. Raymond made the motion. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Kathy? Is that it? I'm all done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, takes care of PCOs, PCCOs. Mr. Smith, let's pay some bills. 
Okay, I'm reading from your agenda at the bottom. They're also on the uh, financial sheets, if you care to look there. Uh, first one's uh, for CENCOM uh, for work at Penichuk, uh, that's IT contractor, $5,635. The next one's Computer Hut of New England, also an IT contractor, total of $2,836, that's two invoices. Next one is for Control Technologies. They're still doing uh, some commissioning work at Fairgrounds Middle School. That totals $1,848. Then we have a bunch of invoices from Harriman. One, two, three, four, five. For work at McCarthy Middle School, Penichuk Middle School, also Birchell Main D Elementary Schools and Franklin Street Schools. Those all totaled $165,583.13. Three invoices from Harvey for work at Penichuk Middle School, McCarthy Middle School, and Franklin Street. Those totaled $3,257,578.45. We have three invoices from Hayner Swanson. That's our surveying co contractor consultant. Uh, two of them for McCarthy Middle School and one for Penichuk. Those totaled $7,694.71. One invoice from uh, Hertz Furniture, formerly School Furnishings, for furniture we received at Penichuk Middle School, totaling $309,995.55. One invoice from John Turner Consulting for work at Birchill and Main Dunstable for $10,000. And I'm just adding them up here in my head. Basically two invoices um, for Turner Group, HL Turner Group. Um, it's not looking right to me, I'm sorry. Let me look at this. So the security vestibule project, uh, $8,757 was definitely from H.L. Turner Group of, of Concord. They're the architect. The other two invoices should be John Turner Consulting. They are our testing agent also for uh, work at Penichuk and McCarthy Middle School. Those two totaled $4,011.71. So two different contractors there if you followed that. Okay, all those totaled uh, for Franklin Street, $83,626.59. For the middle school project, $3,543,344.62. For Birchill, Main D, $136,211.34. And for the security vegetable project, $8,757 for a total of Three million seven hundred seventy-one thousand nine hundred thirty-nine dollars and fifty-five cents. So I'll need a motion to approve invoices as read for Franklin Street invoices eighty-three thousand six hundred and twenty-six dollars fifty-nine cents. Middle school project three million five hundred forty-three thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars and sixty-two cents. Birchill, Maine Dunstable one hundred and thirty-six thousand two hundred and eleven dollars and thirty-four cents and the Security Vestibule Project, $8,757 for total invoices tonight of $3,771,939.55. So moved. So moved by Alderman Sullivan. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay, comments by committee members. A couple, a couple items uh, I just want to mention before I ask for anybody. Um, as you all know, we get we approved the guaranteed maximum price for the McCarthy Middle School, and at that time we knew that we needed additional bond money to support the middle school project. Uh, I had to run that by the mayor and this board, and they had mentioned it probably a thousand times. And we were trying to see how much we had left at Fairgrounds and Penichuk. Uh, Fairgrounds, we did fairly well. We had some money left. But uh, at Penichuk, 
there are additional things that had to be done. It, it, uh, so when all said and done, if we do the additional work that we want to do, and one of them is the is the dehumidification, then there won't be a lot of money coming out of those two schools to transfer into McCarthy School. So uh, there's already $10 million in the bonding plan to cover the middle school project. I was hesitating to go in until I knew whether we needed the full $10 million. And uh, after talking to the mayor and the city treasurer and everything, I'm going to go in for the full $10 million. Anything that's not spent at the end of the project will either not be bonded or if the Board of Aldermen so desire, it can be moved to another project. But uh, the way it, things are working right now, hopefully this is wood, uh, we should be in really good shape. But uh, there's still a lot of work to be done in the McCarthy School, and we keep having unknown unknowns. Um, and those are the things you have to have the contingency and the escalation fees and everything for. You notice that like on Franklin Street and, uh, and Penichuk, some of that money came back. So uh, it, it, it could be fine, but uh, when we're building a school and we're getting to the end, we can't take the time to spend a couple of months going in for additional bond money. It's very much easier not to sell the bonds or to transfer it to another project if, so, if the Board of Aldermen so deems. So I just want to let you know that the legislation will be going in shortly for the additional 10 million. It's always been in the bonding plan, so it's nothing new, and the mayor's been aware of it since day one, and so is the treasurer. And I think most of the Board of Aldermen know. So, all right, that's, so I just want to let you know that. The other thing is the uh, one thing that came up at a past meeting and now is becoming um, not a requirement yet, but uh, our new, what's the name of that committee, Lori? Power. Oh. The Power Committee. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> electric Aggregation Committee. Right. Yeah. Are sort of put going th forth with the uh, legislation that says that we should be basically putting charging stations uh, all over town. So I have talked to, <laughs> I have talked to uh, Harvey and Harriman about putting in the infrastructure right now so we don't have to dig up new paving to be able to put charging stations in. But until we get further along and see where we're at financially and whether or not this group wants to put in the charging stations, we're just going to have the conduit underground that will allow us to do that without digging up half the parking lot. Uh, does anybody have any questions or concerns on that? Yes, Lori. About how many? Do we know, I mean, what they're going to set up for? Well, I, I said to pull the conduit in to support 10. That doesn't mean we'll put 10 in, but if we ever go to 10, okay. we won't have to dig up the parking lot. Okay, thank you. So, yes. Where? 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 McCarthy Middle School. Oh, so the... 10 would be at McCarthy. I missed that one. Right. Too late to not dig up things at Penichuk, so. <laughs> Actually, I think if we ever did put them at, well, I'm not even going to get into Penichuk, but uh, <laughs> um, now is the time to do it so that because uh, I don't want to be digging up new pavement across multiple lanes of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my question comes back to where does that electricity come from? Is that going to be coupled with the solar projects? Is that going to be paid out by the taxpayers of Nashua as part of our payments that we already make to Eversource? Um, like who, who well, pays for the charging stations? How that gets paid for, they're just putting in five of them at the new DPW building. <laughs> What they haven't decided is whether they're going to have a system where if you're a city employee, you swipe a card and you charge your car because they're also mandating all new trucks and cars be electric. Right. Well, I mean, I think there's a difference between city-owned vehicles being charged at city charging places. I mean, when I drove a county car in New York, I used county gas and I didn't have to pay out of my pocket for that. But I couldn't put county gas in my personal vehicle, you know. So if they have a way of 
charging, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, they'll have to figure that out before we put the charging stations in. But it, the idea is probably that if you pull up and you're a member of the public and you want to use city power, you'll have to pay for it somehow. And, and the school is powered by solar for most of the time. And, and, and trust me, we found out at Penichuk that, by the way, that the solar panels, by design, don't hold snow. And we had to put in, or putting in, is that the PCO coming up? That won't be a PCO. Oh. A, a, a thing on the roof, because right near the library, we go in the library, somebody already found out that snow comes off of there and buries you. <laughs> so... Um, we're going to put a safeguard so that no ice or anything come off to hit anybody. Um, yes. So I know we can't bank the solar power energy yet, but is there a way of using the over, I'm not using any of the correct words, but the over electricity that's created to go into those charging stations and then it's a wash? We are having discussions with um, Revision Energy right now about batteries. Uh, the technology is currently there to allow the electricity to charge the batteries during the day so you can power the school at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't come to final determination on that, but that's what we're working on. And there's a possibility we could do that at Penichuk as well. And uh, I believe the solar panels are in operation at Penichuk. Do we have that in firm yet? Not 100%, no. So, um, but anyway, pen <laughs> solar panels work in great at fairgrounds. And they will be, this school will have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I ask an unrelated question? Are we done with solar? As long as it has something to do with joint special. Uh. <laughs> yes, no, unrelated to solar panels. My question is, the state announced that there's a $13 million um, fund for school security improvements, and I wondered if um, Mr. Smith or Dr. Andre could let us know at a future meeting um, if Nashua has applied for that and what we should expect. Um, it might end up being a non-public question because it's security, but I wanted to put the bug in your ear while I have you here in front of me. Mario, do you want to go on? Is, is this a brand new yeah. thing just, just got passed? Just... Uh, I think the governor announced it last week. Okay, because we we have been taking advantage of all the grants for us. I mean, we're actually we've been putting in our favorite subject of bollards around some of the schools. Um, so we've got a fair amount of money. I want to say 150, 250 thousand okay. this last go around. So right, I'll, I'll, I'll dig check up. into that though and see what's what's going on. We're I am hoping that we can get the two million dollars for the last three security vestibules from that fund if we can mm -hmm. and um, I think you'll find uh, when it's time to discuss it that the McCarthy school will be one of the safest schools in New England great we're doing a number of things but we're not going to advertise it I'm sure that Mario feels comfortable with that <laughs> <laughs> that was it just all right anything else any other comments about anything no Okay, we don't need a non-public. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Who said that? <laughs> Ms. Bishop uh, made the motion to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 7.43 p.m. <laughs>